What is going on guys? Um, we're all in luck today. It's Tuesday, January 7th, and it's, according to my car, it's 50 degrees. And starting tomorrow, there's supposed to be like a snowstorm rolling in, so this is really, really lucky um, that we get this weather to work with for today's vlog. All right, so we're uh, we're at Simplot, big, big, big park that I uh, test at, and I decided to redo the antenna test for DJI with the uh, the ORT Shield patch antennas. You know, a lot of people think, and I tend to agree that um, trying to fly around the school wasn't a good idea because at that point you're just relying relying on reflections. So, if we look behind me, um, a little under a quarter of a mile that way is a row of trees. And so I'm going to fly out there at 200 milliwatt and just compare the bit rate with the different antennas behind the trees. Um, and I figured this would be a good test. It's a little windy. Sorry if uh, I'm not coming through clear, but... So, I've been testing my... FR7 out here a lot at 200 milliwatt and when I fly behind that row of trees on analog it's horrible mind you that's with um, fusion mode on the fusion module so I don't know if that's better or worse but you know just like the analog breakup with trees it's just been so bad so I figured I might as well bring uh, the HD out here the digital and just kind of use that as my benchmark all right let me get set up all right, so we've got stock, singularities, ORT shield, true RC X airs. Uh, and you know, we're just running the newbie drone vivid with the stock antennas on the air unit. And so I'm gonna do this a little differently this time. Normally I try to narrate the, the, uh, the bit rate, but since I know now that it's pretty easy to uh, bake the OSD into the video with, uh, I, I used handbrake, you just like, you literally just like drag the file in a handbrake and then you go a couple of tabs over, drag the SRT file in a handbrake and you like, there's an option where you burn it in and that's all you do. And then you take those clips and then I dump them into Vegas and then I can do my edit for the vlog. So instead of narrating, I'm just gonna pay attention to the flying. And then after I finish all four antennas, I'm gonna go back through the DVR in my goggles and write down the lowest bit rate per antenna in my little notepad. So you guys will actually know the results before I do as far as this video is concerned. Um, and so yeah, I'll, I'll find out at the end uh, which antennas did better, how they all did. And uh, yeah. We'll see what happens. Again, sorry for the wind. Um, I'm filming with my X3000 today, so I can't control the volume. So hopefully it's coming through okay. All right, first test. Stock antennas, 200 milliwatt, low latency mode, and autofocus mode. So I've been flying my FR7 out here and uh, just now when I took off it felt really weird but then I remembered this is a 5 inch quad and it doesn't go nearly as fast as that. Okay so we'll just fly behind this row of trees getting some pretty bad stutter. Maybe we'll go back up the road and then just do another lap. Alright and then come back. And again, I'm not even looking at the bit rate, but I know it was bad because uh, it stuttered.
Okay, that was stock antennas. Let's switch to the singularities. Oh, this wind chill sucks. If it wasn't for the wind, it would actually be pretty nice out here. And I probably wouldn't even need the coat. So yeah, that was pretty funny when I took off. Um, felt like something was wrong, but I remember um, I've been flying out here so much with my FR7 and the FR7 just goes. Like, you set that thing to cruise, like you set the, uh, like my camera tilts like 30, 35 degrees and you set it to that angle to cruise and it's going like 50 miles an hour. And then this guy, it just, it felt hilarious. It felt like I was flying a micro. But anyway, let's try the singularities. I need to get HD on my FR7 eventually. Oh man, this wind. Still getting some stutter. Go up the road. And one more pass. And come back. That felt about the same. You guys already know before I do. So weird flying this, uh, newbie drone vivid because it doesn't have a GoPro so it just like floats you can see it now I'm gonna have comments about why don't you just land on the table Whew. all right guys time for the ORT shield um, and again these were sent out by Get FPV for review. Uh. Okay, so the stock antennas and the singularities both had stutter behind the wall of trees. Let's see if these do as well. better than uh, the Omni antennas. Yeah. One more pass. A little bit of stutter, but a um, lot better than the Omnis. Way better. Oh, that was terrifying. My thumb slipped off the stick. That's what happens when you can't feel your fingers, guys. Oh, you know what? People are gonna ask about this. Let's do a behind test. Let's see, we'll go. What's my crossfire? We'll go to this tree. That's pretty far behind, getting some stutter. We'll do that with the X Air too. So you guys can't accuse me of like 
pointing my head at the ground or something because people have said that before as if these directional antennas can't compensate for a slight bend in my neck, you know what I mean? All right, let's switch to the X-Airs. I kind of joke about this, guys, in my other vlogs, about putting these antennas on the DJI goggles. Um, but that video about the goggles being defective because the RP SMA connectors are spinning kind of resurfaced. People keep finding that video, unfortunately. Um, and they keep posting it like, oh my God, should I be concerned about this? Guys, you don't have to be concerned about it. Just don't put the uh, antennas on with excessive force. I mean, it's not, this is not anything new. Uh, you know, as, as long as we've been using SMA and RP SMA connectors, if you over tighten them, they're gonna break whatever they're fixed to. Um, it's nothing new. So if you see that video, if you happen to come across that video, don't panic. Just put your connectors on, finger tight. Even if the antennas aren't designed to bottom out in the goggles, like uh, like let's say you use a RP SMA to SMA adapter and that, you know, just spins. Just put them on finger tight. I mean, like, snug them up. I mean, it's not anything new. You're not gonna break your goggles. The goggles aren't defective. I've put these antennas on and take, taken them off 50 times. I mean, it's it's not, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy that like, we even have to explain this to the, the new people entering the hobby because of this clickbait ass video that got posted. All right, let's try the x -airs. Got a fresh battery. All right, let's see how the x -airs do. Make sure I'm actually recording. That would suck. I really can't feel my thumbs. Okay, behind the wall. Felt a little bit of stutter. No red bars. I think I got red bars in the last three tries. A uh, little bit of stutter. Okay, gotta come back. Red bars. This vivid frame is so cool, guys. Okay, we'll do a little behind test. People ask about this and I typically, unfortunately I kind of brush it off because I know that directional antennas um, have, uh, you know, you, they still get good signal behind them. That seemed like it was a little worse than the shields which I guess would make sense because a crosshair is more directional than a patch. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go through the DVR and see what the results are. And like I said, you guys already know before me. So now it's my turn to find out. Be right back. All right, so that was pretty interesting. Um, man, this wind sucks. 
So the stock antennas, and again, you guys already saw this, but I'm finding out for the first time. Stock antennas, the lowest I saw was 4.5 megabits. It'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see the uh, SRT file when I get home. Um, and this was kind of surprising. The singularity I saw dropped down to 3.6, so lower than stock. Um, when I tested these the first time, and it was on the, uh, the original firmware, the singularities did, when I tested them the first time, the singularities did do better, but this time, um, and, it, and it's hard to actual, actually see the lowest megabit, because it'll, it's hard to see the, um, the actual lowest megabit because it drops down so quickly. So I'm just kind of, I'm almost like, not, maybe like guessing, but again, I'll see it in the SRT file. So now the stock and the singularity are like, they're pretty close. Um, the ORT shield, the lowest I saw was seven megabits. And then behind me, the lowest I saw was 15 megabits. And for the X-Air, the lowest I saw was 10. And then 11 behind. So again, the, uh, the ORT is better for flying behind you. So what are the takeaways? Again, it's, I think it's a given that the X-Air is going to be your best bet for range and penetration. Like when I start flying long range, when I put my, when I put an air unit on my FR7, I'm definitely gonna use the X-Airs. You know, if you only had like to buy one thing, like if you just got your, your DJI setup and you're just looking to see what antennas you might upgrade to. I think for the money, the ORT would be a good bet because you're gonna get good coverage behind you. And compared to stock, what was it? Compared to the stock antennas, I'm not gonna math that, but you're almost getting twice the bandwidth versus the stock antennas with the ORT shield. So, you know, for money, for the money, those, are, those would be a good upgrade if that's gonna be your only antenna purchase, right? If you want, you know, absolute best performance and range and penetration, then you're gonna want to get the X airs. Um, the singularities, that's kind of a weird one. I still think the singularities, even though they didn't outperform stock and actually did a little bit worse, I'm still gonna say the singularities are also a good buy just for convenience because when you put the singularities on, you don't ever have to take them off because they're so low profile. So I, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if you want to go out and spend seventy-five dollars just to have low profile antennas, but the stock antennas are really long. And like, so in my bag, I can fit the goggles in my bag with the singularities on there, but I can't do it with the stock antennas. I have to take them off. So that's to me. I like the singularities because I never take them off. The only time I take the singularities off is for these vlogs when I'm testing antennas. Otherwise, the singularities just stay in the goggles. Even when I have my analog mod on, I never take those off. So for me, that just makes them ultra convenient. So yeah, uh, that was the, hopefully that was the, you know, end all be all definitive antenna test, you know, from me. Um, I'm not sure how I could do it any better you know, we have clear performance differences. ORT is a little bit better behind us. Um, XR is gonna be better for, or the X Airs are gonna be better for long range. They're obviously both way better than stock, so don't listen. You know, uh, I don't know why people try to say the stock antennas are not worth upgrading. I mean, that's obviously not true. So yeah, you guys take the information um, you know, you factor that in with the cost and what your needs are and what you're going to be doing. And hopefully you can make the, uh, you know, the best decision for, for you and your needs. And yeah, I think I'll, uh, my fingers are kind of warming up a little bit because I've got my little Amazon hand warmer. Got a little bit of juice left in my other 2200 Ma Forest pack. I'm going to leave you guys with, uh, just some footage ripping around Simplot. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.